Christopher Scott Washburn, born May 13, 1966. The 1986 NBA draft, by many accounts, was cursed. By some, was the worst draft in history. By few, it illuminated a problem predominantly in the African-American community that was seen as the norm for the times. Three of the top 13 picks have died early deaths. Two of the top six picks have spent significant time in prison and of course, arguably the best player in the draft, taken number two and seen as a better player than the eventual GOAT Michael Jordan, never played in the NBA because just two days after being drafted, Len Bias was celebrating and died from drug overdose in the middle of the night. The class holds the record for not only the most players to have at some point checked into rehab for substance abuse, but also for having the most lifetime banned players as well. Chris Washburn is at the top of that list. He was the first player picked after Len Bias went second overall and expected to change the culture in Golden State with his ahead of time physical gifts and build. He was 6'11", lean, and at times played with the motivation to be the best ever. What happens when that motivation is led to the wrong things, such as drugs and a lifestyle inconducive and directly harmful to your biggest tool as a basketball player, your body? You become the perfect fit with the NBA draft class of 1986. You also become a story tale of what not to do as documentaries, professional and amateur, are made about your fall from grace. They parade you around on podiums as living example of how we can ban you from our league and you still be in position where you need to take our money for speaking engagements as we show you off as a sad case that hopefully can scare younger, newly drafted players away from your path. You lose everything making your dealer rich and your own mother disowns you after acquiring control of your money because of your lack of discipline. That once confident pride of being the biggest name and best player in your city and level has to be swallowed as you return home with nothing but whispers of failure behind your back. This is a life Chris Washburn is taking in stride, keeping his spirits up and enjoying the small town love once again, even if his name follows with, you heard what happened to him? Here are three reasons Chris Washburn's growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Chris Washburn is a 6'11 center born in Hickory, North Carolina that became an instant star as a freshman in high school. After a sophomore year where he averaged 26 points a game, he transferred to Fork Union Military School in order to focus on his grades. After his junior year, he transferred again to Loringburg Institute and finished high school as the number one high school player in the country. Not many thought he'd wind up a panhandler, eating from trash cans, and stealing from gas stations for dinner. Stunt number one, an unfortunate error. All growth stunts are created different, although many players find similar ones to relate to. More than not, you see players relate to being in a bad fitted era, but not often for the reasons Chris Washburn and the 1986 class found in common. It's highly speculated who was responsible for introducing cocaine to the African American community in the 70s and 80s, but it became popular as the drug of choice, much like weed is today among the youth. It was affordable for the people living in its confines, provided an instant euphoric feeling, and was everywhere amongst the young kids looking to socialize and express their personalities. For a personality like Chris Washburn, this era was forever damaging and would become his life story. After signing a letter of intent to NC State, he somehow enrolled at the university having scored just 500 on his SATs, bright-eyed and extremely immature according to past coaches. It didn't help he was impressionable as well, with the need for everyone to like him. 
It led to him first trying crack cocaine while at NC State because of its popularity within his age group and normalcy of that era. There were no crack is whack slogans, no say no to drugs commercials on TV, and no former three-time high school All-American top three pick flameouts, or should I say washouts, visiting your school, warning you of the drug trappings. So, in need of feeling attached to what was going on, Chris fell too deep in the world of substance abuse and began a long path he barely escaped from with his life. Heavily because of an era not equipped with protection and examples we have today. Stunt number two, immaturity. Not fully developed. It's the simple meaning of the word immature, and ironic when used describing a man that stood 6 foot 11 and over 250 pounds at one point. This growth stunt perfectly coincides with being in an era like the 80s in all the negative ways possible. When you see most drug users, it's often what they have in common. Lack of discipline, easily influenced, need for praise or being the center of attention, which all can be balled up and thrown in the trash bin of immaturity. As a freshman at NC State, his season was cut short to just seven games after he pulled what he called a prank on the football team, but police officers called theft and failure to disclose the truth that led to him being suspended by the team for the rest of the season. According to Washburn, he just wanted to play a practical joke on the football players by stealing a good radio and replacing it with a broken one of his. He carried that out, but while returning from the dorm after replacing the radio, campus security approached all 6 foot 11 of them and asked his purpose for being in the area. He then made up a lie which led to security searching the trunk of his car and finding the radio. It's when he made the story of it just being a practical joke. He received 48 hours of jail time and probation, along with missing out on a very important developing freshman year. He'd return as a sophomore with what he called a chip on his shoulder to prove his All-American status wasn't a fluke and showed good foundation for dominance, leading his Wolfpack team to the regional finals of the NCAA tournament. He averaged 18 points, 7 rebounds, and started every game. The next best player, Nate McMillan, averaged just 9 points a game. McMillan went on to have a 12-year NBA career and may win a championship as a coach this very season. In another immature move by Washburn, he took the foundation of a year and immediately parlayed that into a professional career when he announced he was leaving state. He was guaranteed a top five selection, so I can't blame him, but I can only imagine what a few more years could have done for his maturity in life, period. Stunt number three, prime user. As in, by what was supposed to have been his prime years as a basketball player, Chris Washburn was long gone from the NBA and instead knew all the best crack smoking spots, had an on-call dealer, one that would show up to his rehab as his family member to serve Chris, his estate being turned over to his mother because of his insane spending on drugs, 14 different rehab stays, and begging for five, ten dollars on the side of the street. This prime also included a two-year prison sentence for possession of crack cocaine at just 28 years old and long washed from the league. Before that, he was the number three pick in 1986 by George Carl and the Golden State Warriors, who saw him as a pick that they quote, had to take. He racked up fines for being late to practice and butted heads constantly with head coach George Carl, who was infamously known for having a short leash on players and let some tell it predominantly black players. He struggled as the youngest player on the team to fit in with the older guys, so spent most of his off time seeking out, acquiring a spot, and smoking crack or freebasing. He played in just 35 games as a rookie, and after eight as a sophomore, he was traded to the Atlanta Hawks. During his time with the Warriors, he frequented rehab and was also busted by the league for use and suspended. 
he played in 29 games for Atlanta before failing his third drug test in three years. At this point, he was banned from the NBA and played the next nine years overseas. One stint in the cocaine capital, Colombia, where reportedly he never showed up to a single practice or game. Shortly after returning home, his money was quickly being used for drugs until his mother seized control of his estate and cut him off. He became homeless until one day he decided to quit using and cleaned up his life at 45 years old. He opened a chicken spot in his hometown and now works the register as he greets former fans in the community and helps less fortunate eat or earn money. All in all, the Chris Washburns of the world are sadly needed. Just like he needed a Chris Washburn, the future needs him. Yes, he took the arrows and paid for it with his career and money, but at least he's alive, in good spirits, and most importantly, clean. He now lives off an NBA retirement and pension fund and talks to anyone that would listen about the mistakes not to make because of drug use. Salute to him, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, and I'm out. Make sure you follow me on twitch.tv slash stunnedgrowthgaming if you want extra free content like me breaking down the day's highlights, moves, drafts, and past players or games upon your request. Let's chat and talk live as it's easier to answer your questions than a place like Instagram where your messages tend to get lost. Follow me there. It's free and we can connect instantly. Join the Discord as well to chat in-game. I'll leave links to everything below.